Hey gang, Sparky from electricalindustrynetwork.com. In this video I'm going to show a few pictures and then we're going to come back and take a look at this diagram and I'll explain what happened and what's going on in uh, the following pictures. This is about a double pole single throw switch that should have been installed to this pool swimming pool pump motor. Instead they had a uh, stack switch tied in there and they were only switching one side of uh, the power off a 220 volt motor. So let's take a look at these other uh, pictures here. This picture here is just wrong in so many different ways. A lot of the stuff you might be able to just figure out, but uh, this box was a half inch box and it's got uh, just slip couplings. I don't know, you know, they, I don't know what they were thinking here, but anyway, they just used some EMT couplings and just slid it over the half inch. And we know that's just not right. And then within inside here as well, we've got uh, the box wasn't even grounded. We got UF cable going out to the pool motor. And we have, uh, I think this was off the cord that went to the swimming pool light. And that goes back to the switch. Here's the switch, and if you uh, shut, it's a stack switch, if you shut one of those switches off, it killed the motor. Well, it killed the motor because it was only providing 110 to the motor, but the problem is that the power will go through that windings of that motor and come back through, and it's basically a, it's a electrical shock hazard um, at the switch as well as the motor itself because both circuits both phases are not disconnected and that's what we need to pay attention to here that's why we install a double pole single throw switch is to disconnect both phases 110 each to provide 220 to a swimming pool motor and we're not talking amperages or anything here this this picture is kinda dark but uh, we'll just go on to the next one another close-up shot of it uh, going in there back into that wonderful conduit here's the switch switch wasn't even grounded um, there's corrosion built up all over this here this is basically they did a line and a load off this one particular toggle right here here's your view from the other side they got a line and a load but they're not even doing anything with that one I think the neck picture shows us um, this black is basically just tied into um, uh, a wire nut going up and, and feeding all the way through out to the motor. And that one's a little blurry, another little blurry shot, but yeah, you can see that this is just tied through. And they actually switched um, one of these going out and about. Now this, this UF cable here goes back to the panel, to the service. There it is there. So you've got a UF cable coming in, which you can't run through EMT anyway, um, let alone seal tight. And in this particular case, uh, they did ground it. And then on your two-pole breaker here, they connected the white to the A phase and the black to the B phase. You know, so in, all in all, it worked when they had the switch on, but it just, as far as the disconnecting means of it, it, it that and the wiring in itself is just incorrect. So I went ahead and pulled that off and I just wanted to double check some things as far as where it was going and what it was doing. I'm back in here I just got the UF cables coming in and how they did this I really don't know. Um, the, this is pretty old service and this is some really thick metal right here so they had to beat this thing to a bloody pulp with a with a hammer and screwdriver just to even insert that seal tight connector in there we'll give them credit for using seal tight though huh okay anyway here's what you got you got 110 coming in on each one and then you would have 110 going out on each one when you hit the switch this close and provide the power through, goes out to the motor, all fine and dandy, works good. Of course, you got it grounded. Here's the switches 
here's the back of the switch on a 250 volt two pole double pole single throw switch you've got a line which we've got right there and then you've got a load which we have right there this is what the front of the switch looks like so you always want to pay attention on this and don't get this confused with a four-way switch we're not going to go into that right now but they basically look the same on the back as far as the four terminals the the color coding is different so always be aware make sure that you get a double pole single throw 250 volt 20 amp switch now we'll take a look at this uh, stack switch here and basically we've got the power going uh, going back to the panel and it comes down goes into the stack switch and then just on that one side it went out to the motor so yes indeed it will disconnect the power from that motor but the problem again is that it'll go through the windings and it'll come back through on the the one that is unswitched at this point so if you were to test between this wire and this wire and the switch is in the open position you test between these two wires you're not going to read any voltage because it's on the same phase you test it to ground and you'd get 110 you test it to ground and get 110 but you're still on the same phase now you turn that switch on you close the switch you get that other phase in there so phase to phase you'll get your 220 so if you follow along with that basically what it is is this one was feeding straight through that J box and it was unswitched so it went in and then back out and it came back so if a service guy is out there working on that motor only one of these is switched and that's extremely dangerous um, not going to get into all the codes on all this right now but uh, I just wanted to do an overview of why you need to use a two pole double pole double throw switch on a 250 volt um, swim pool motor and anyway I hope that uh, maybe clears up a few things if you ever go to uh, change out a pool pump motor and if you got any questions as always uh, leave them below please comment if you like please subscribe I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and making comments, so as long as I keep getting those, I'll keep making videos. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you later. It's Sparky with ElectricalIndustryNetwork.com.